In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we continue our look at some of the editing techniques found in the American TV drama NCIS Season 14 intro. In the last video, we showed you how they begin to implement a picture-in-picture -picture concept by bringing three different sized videos on the screen at the same time. The next thing they do is a bit more complex. We'd like to show you how to do that. That involves taking two other video clips and having them come out from behind the bottom one that you see on the screen. And then they'll take one of the four and have it enlarge to make a transition to a new segment in the intro. Please look at this 10 second example and then we'll show you how to do what you're about to see. The next thing we want to do is take two of the videos that are not on my tracks and make them emerge from behind the bottom one that you see on the screen. In order to do that, they have to be on a higher numbered track. So I'm going to take my CB for center bottom video and drag it from track five down to track seven. And they emerge at a certain moment in time, not at the beginning. I've calculated that to be 2 seconds and 13 frames. So I'm going to move my playhead over to 2 seconds and 13 frames. And then I'm going to set a timeline marker. I'll right click and click on add timeline marker. And here we, we will have, I'll just type two videos and click on OK. This is a place where the videos will start on track number 5 and track number 6. So with that area available. I'll give myself a bit more room so we can see better. We'll take the lower right, put it on track number six, and the lower left, and put that on track number five. Again, we'll have to do what we did before, which is resize them. I'll click on track number five, double click. We'll keep their proportions, make it smaller, and move it right behind the other one. Click on OK. But there's a quicker way to do the one within the following track. I'm going to right click on the track, the lower left one, and I will do copy keyframe attributes. I'll click on the, the one now and highlight it on track six, right click, and I'll do paste keyframe attributes. And now both of them are hidden behind the other one. The next thing I need to do in, the, in both cases is I need to keyframe them. We'll go back to the one on track five. If I look at the NCIS, it, they both move from behind the center one to either left or right in about 20 frames. So I'm going to set an initial position keyframe. And then I'll move over a, a 20 frames and then we'll drag our image to the left. And click on OK. Then I'll move to track number six. We'll set a position value at the beginning behind the other image. Move over 20 frames. And then move to the right. And in this case, I'm going to have to resize the image so it fits on the screen. Since I don't have a scale keyframe, it will be smaller both where it starts and when it ends. And then I'm going to pause the video and put a frame around both of these. So now when we play the clip from the beginning, we'll see the three primary picture in picture come in and then the other two come out from behind the center one. Now we look at another technique that's a bit more tricky. In the NCIS video, they take the lower right picture in picture and have it grow to fill the entire screen. This happens at three seconds and three frames into the project. So I'm going to need another timeline marker. 
I'll click up here and we're going to go in to the entire movie, not the clip. So I need to change the orientation to movie. We're going to go in three seconds and three frames. And I'll set a timeline marker. That is where the element on track number six begins to expand over the entire screen. If I go back to clip, we see it's 20 seconds into the video on track number six. I'm going to double click on it. Now when I'm 26 in, now it's going to begin to expand to fill the entire frame. It's going to expand for 12 frames. So I'm going to go over 12 more frames and this is the expansion time. So I need to set another position keyframe, but I also need to set a scale keyframe. I'll go back to the previous keyframe and set a scale to set it there. And we're going to move forward on the position track and set a scale value here. Now in this frame here, it will expand to fill the screen. And I can simply take it and drag it to fill the screen. But I'm going to have a problem. Watch what happens when I click on OK. You notice it's behind the last one because in order to come out it had to come from behind there. How do you change that? How do you fix that? In this case what should happen would be the element on track number seven should be in behind what's on this track. Here's the way you can fix that problem. We're going to go to this place in our timeline and I'm simply going to highlight the bottom two tracks and use Control T to split them. Now I'm going to reverse the tracks. And let's see if that fixed our problem. Now it fills the whole screen and is not behind anything. So in this case, you swap the two tracks as the expansion begins. And that will allow you to perform that function in CyberLink PowerDirector. We have one more lesson in store in relationship to the NCIS introduction techniques. And that relates to how they use titles. That's coming up next.